Hi everybody, Ben here from Artless Ordinary. So, I have, this is dry now, which I can show you guys. So the, the shimmer has really come up quite well. Um, I really do like this piece. I like the way that it kind of has a, a good flow to it. So I hope you guys can see all that shimmer in there. But these treasured golds really do come up quite nicely once they have dried up. So that's got the fire opal, the purple topaz, and the antique um, silver. So, and the light blue base. I was hoping it was going to be a little bit more smoky, but it's um, kind of come out still quite bluish. But So there's that one, which I will put aside. There we go. Oops, is that the right spot? Then... I also have these finally have dried. So these were the two um, comparison ones. So this side is the Montmartre and that side is the Liquitex Basics. The cells real or pearls really did keep their shape a lot better in the Montmartre and they're also more intense in their colouring. So I love this river part. So the river part has got really nice metallic shimmer to it in the Liquitex Basics. But the pearls don't have as much intense color to them um, and they're quite large when the Montmartre one they've got a lot more color to them and they've stayed really nice and pearl shaped so I definitely like this better and the purples both did dry quite dark so as you can see that's the um, original purple and these bits through here um, are the original purple, so the Darkzazine purple. They've come out pretty close in, in darkness once they've dried, but um, I love the effects that this one here has given. So that is the comparison one. So once they varnish up, they may actually shine. Well, this one, they'll both shine more, but um, we'll see whether how it goes. I can't varnish for a while. It's just too cold. Um, it will take too long to dry and there's too many chances for dust and other bits to get in the artwork while it's in the varnish while it's drying so I don't want that. So this is a 12 by 16 and I am going to be doing a multi cup ring pour so um, I'm going to be doing a ring pour with a twist so that swirled ring pour again that I have done before. But I'm going to swirl it more than I have before to try to get it looking. I'm hoping to get it looking a little bit like, um, so in, in Australia, we call them cyclones. Um, in America, I think you call them hurricanes. So the difference is, um, I think they spin a different direction. Cyclones spin one way, um, hurricanes spin the other way. That's to my knowledge. Don't quote me on that. But um. So that's what we call them over here. We call them cyclones. But So that's the, the look I'm trying to get. Um, I'm doing it in blues. I have white, turquoise, um, I know it, but my brain's failing me. Cerulean blue, deep cyan, phalo blue, and this is phalo blue with a bit of black. So it's kind of like a midnight black really it's very dark but I'm um, not not black so all together all of these are 50 grams paint and 50 grams Australian flow troll and four grams water so the only difference is this one here was um, 38 no 48 grams um, blue two grams black and that two grams black really does darken it up quite a bit. So um, keep that in mind when you are mixing colors that certain colors will really change it quite a lot. These are really thick. So I'm hoping that they're not too thick. I don't think so because you want them thick to keep your lines. But um, they're all pretty reasonable consistency to each other. So they're all Montmartre, except for the white. The white is Eraldo Di Polo. Simple is I ran out of um, Montmartre white, and the shop that I buy it from has ran out, so I've got to order one in. 
So for the moment, it's a Raudo Di Polo and the rest are Montmartre. I have four flip cups. Uh, well, four, sorry, four paper cups that I'm going to do my ring pours with. I'm going to try and do two layers of each colour. So, in saying that, there's not a huge, there's probably only half a cup of paint here. So you, you've got to go a little bit easy um, and not over, overdo it. So here we go. There's a bit. And you're better off to do smaller amount in the first layer and a larger amount in your second layer. Just because the first layer will be what comes out last and it won't be as big a ring. So it will be more, more dominant in an, if you put too much in. Okay. Definitely is really thick, but I'm going with the same um, measurements I did last time. So I don't really want to mess with it too much. And now we do a bit of turquoise. I wasn't sure if I should mix it up and go light dark, light dark, or whether I should keep it to um, a gradient from white to dark. I decided on the gradient. So sorry if this part bores you, but I want everyone that hasn't seen the video to see how it is done. So we're just layering these. I'm just pouring these down, not all the way down the edge, kind of just touching the edge at the bottom because the cups um, taper towards the base. So I'm not getting paint all down the side of the cup, just at the very bottom part. Whoops, apart from that one. Trust me to make a mistake. Well, it's not a mistake. It's just I don't want it to. I want it to kind of stay in its layers a bit better. There we go. But yeah, I really enjoyed doing the last one. Um, I am going to be using a corner catcher again. You kind of want as much paint to stay on the canvas as you possibly can. Um, the one issue is going to be, this is going to take forever to dry. With it being as thick as it is, and as cold as it is at the moment, weather-wise, um, this is not going to be a quick drying artwork. Could be up to a week. So the only advantage of it being colder is there's less flying bugs to fly into the artwork. So even though it takes longer to dry, I hopefully I don't have any annoying pesky little gnats or midges. And I am running out of my phalo blue, so I have to go get some of that as well. The shops are all just closed at the moment um, for the virus. They have decided to close everything. Well, my work doesn't close. So close most places. So it's a little bit more challenging to um, get my paint supplies. Alrighty, now the second layer. So all together here, there is about 600 grams of paint, which is a reasonable amount. But you kind of want a good amount in this. Okay. 
Okay, first colour done. So I haven't done as many artworks lately. Um, it's been really, really busy. So I've had to like skip an extra day again every so often with doing an artwork. Um, hopefully I'll get back into the swing of it because things are, should calm down a little bit more soon. <clears throat> you know, life just has those moments where things get a little bit more busy and you got to sacrifice something and it's just doing an artwork. So, but we'll get there. So I'm hoping this turns out really well. So both the yellow one and the red one turned out great. So I've um, got high hopes for this one. Probably because it's in colours that I like as well. So the only difference I'm having to do at the moment is my fourth cup is becoming a little bit more full than my other three cups. So the next few colours, I'm going to have to put a little bit more in and a little bit less in this last one. You really want them to be pretty even with the amount of paint that's in there. So just a little bit more. Because I still want all four cups to have colour. Oops. So you just ease off a little bit on one colour or so. And as long as you keep the first layer more even, then it's not as bad if you have slightly different amounts in the second layer. Try to keep it pretty close, but if it's a little bit different, it's not so bad. I just want the cups to be quite even with um, the final amount of paint. Now, still the first one's that little bit lower. And if you guys don't find this part interesting, just skip forward to where I'm doing the rings. That's fine. I try to do instructional videos so people that can watch it, even if they're very new to this, then they get to see the whole process if they haven't seen my videos in the past. So, and if you have seen my videos, then I'm happy for you to just skip through to the part that you want to see. Really enjoying these colours. Um, 
I'm going to have to get these out of the way because they will get in my way. And you want to make sure that your area is clear, that you don't have things that um, kind of stop you from doing the right flow of your artwork because that's where you get mistakes happen. So there's my four cups. I am going to put them aside in an order like that. I'm going to dab a tiny bit of paint and try and get Try and get it in the right spot. They will sink in because of the heaviness of this paint. So before I start pouring, I'm just going to double check I am recording. Yes, I am. Alrighty. So we are going to pinch our cup. I'm going to pinch it where I poured the paint in from. These are paper cups. So Australia doesn't like them like us selling plastic cups anymore so everything's gone to paper but at least i can pinch them and then we're just going to start off and then once the second color comes out we're going to start doing rings So if I go quiet, it's because I'm concentrating. I'm loving these colours together already. So the other reason why I use Floetrol with these is because Floetrol seems to keep, um, a Floetrol or a pouring medium seems to keep the rings in better shape than just using a glue and water mixture. Uh, the paint is thick, so it is taking a while to come out all the way. I just slow my rings down as it gets closer to the center. And as long as the paint is still coming out in a stream and not a drip, I'll keep pouring. Once it looks like it's about to drip, I stop and try not to let it drip in the canvas. Oh, cool. That cap looks awesome. And that ring looks beautiful. Okay. Ah, that can be a bit rough on your back. Definitely going to have to get myself a new art table. So, ring number two. So I'm going to pinch my cup. I'm not going to tilt tip it, but I'm just going to tilt it because so it doesn't just come off this edge. It's going to push into the other one.
So that that very dark blue, because I added a little bit of black into it, and then the white is next to that, I may get a little bit of grey. Just because even though the, it, it turned into a dark blue, there's still black in there. And once you've got a little bit of black and that white touches it, it will create a bit of grey. But that is fine. Because I think grey will actually suit this um, these colour scheme quite well. So this can be a little bit time consuming, but don't overly rush this part. Especially like, um, if you rush the beginning, it's not so bad because that becomes the edges. But when you rush the last bit, that becomes your centre focal point. So that's where you need to make sure you take your time. Get your rings nice and evenish. To the best of your ability, I always say. Okay, we're about to drip. <laughs> ah. Cool. They're looking awesome. It's creeping that way slightly, but I don't want to tilt it yet if I don't if I don't have to. So I'm going to do this other top corner now. So as everything now gets thicker, it is going to make the canvas, it, it, everything is going to go to the middle because the weight on the canvas is getting heavier and heavier. So that's the way it's going to want to go. Like I said, I do go a little bit more quiet when I'm concentrating. Just so I can make sure that I do it right. All these cups look so cool. So that is getting very close to that edge. I just want to watch it because I don't want that to tip over just yet. All right, last one. So this one is going to look a little bit different just because there's more white and I think less colors in it. I'm going to have to tilt this ever so slightly just so it doesn't go over that edge.
And I also find, depending which way you, you do your circles, you will get one side that seems to have more rings and one side that will give you less rings. Okay, I have to, wow. Well, this is where you gotta concentrate. I'm trying to stop the paint going over the edges while I'm watching my rings because I don't want to mess up my rings at the last minute. I'm going over the edge on that side, so I'm stopping. Okay, I better get my gloves on and start tilting before I lose too much paint. <clears throat> awesome! These colours are magnificent. So because you can see this ring is different because it had more white. And the first ring had less white and more blues. So you can see a slight difference there. Okay, I've got my corner catcher. I may go over the corner that is already tilting over. So I'm just going to come down into this corner gently. There we go. And then go back to the center. You want all that paint to go back to the middle. See where your four rings join in the middle? That's what you want to stay. Yeah, that's going a little bit better. Okay. Now I'm going to go up here to this side. Come on in the corner before I lose too much else. That's it. Okay, now come back. Make sure you always come back the way that you came. Like always go back to the center the way that you went to the center. Okay. So yeah, the paint's over there. This will be my most challenging corner, I think. Yes, it is. Okay, now I come back. Now for the last one. So there we go. Into the corner, over that bottom bit that hadn't gone over, and then come back. Now I'm just double checking that my corners have all got paint on them. 
because you use a corner catcher sometimes it doesn't go all the way to the bottom of those corners which it has on all corners but that last one which I fixed no the first one sorry oh. I'm liking this already but um, I wanted to swirl it I hope I don't ruin it by swirling it but sometimes you gotta go with your plan don't ya <laughs> do I go with my plan or do I leave it Oh, now I'm confused because I'm really liking this as it is. It's not completely symmetrical, but that's that's what I that's what I find fluid arts fun for. Hmm. I actually do feel I want to leave it. What I am going to do is just try and get a little bit of paint off this bottom edge. Just some of this darker blue that's down here. If I can just stretch it a little bit. There we go. Just open that side up a bit more left it not so dark I hope I'm still in camera, guys. The canvas isn't completely level, which sometimes concerns me. I'm going to just run my finger under and get these drips off. Hopefully that will stop it from pulling more paint off. Want to catch in my way actually. There we go. I'm going to leave this one and as is. I'm going to do a swirl with the blues and next time, well, not next time I do this, I like this a lot the way that it is. And I think if I, if I mess with it, I worry I'm going to, I'm going to ruin it. And then I will try and recreate this and I won't get it this way. So sometimes you just have to go with what your brain says at the time. And at the moment it's telling me I like it too much. So that's it. <laughs> so next time I will try and get more of the same color so see how this one I've got the blue in the center the dark blue the light blue then the white and then some rings I kind of want the same color in the center so then when I swirl it it will definitely give that more of a cyclone look I don't know how this would go if I swirled it um and I think some of my rings might be too close to the edge to swirl properly. That I think I will... I think you'll lose the effects that they're getting. But um, that's the fun of it. You, you go, with, go with what you like. And at the moment, this is what I'm liking. So I'm going to stick with it. Sorry for changing my plans on you guys. Um, but yeah. Uh, ring paw with four rings. So it's good how there's difference in them this one's quite large um it's getting a little bit of cloudy kind of effects in it 
Same with over here. Um, that could be mixing the two different brands up. So by having Montmartre and Irado Di Polo in the white, could be given a slight cloud effect. But I got really cool defined rings in all of them. And I'm really, really liking it. And I love these colours. So that will be it. What I will continue to, to do is scrape the edges with my palette knife underneath. Because um, it will, with the amount of paint on there, it's still going to want to drip. Um, I may have to give it a slight torch. The only issue with torching, it is going to create some little specks in it. Because the colours underneath are going to show through the colour on top. But I want to get rid of these bubbles. Because the paint is thicker, some of these bubbles aren't popping as easily as they could. That's good, it hasn't changed it too much. Got a couple little specks, but um, nothing that's overly distracted too much from the actual artwork. Awesome. All right. You guys are just going to have to tell me what you think now because this is different to what I told you I was going to do. But um, I hope you guys like it. The colours to me are perfect for what I wanted. So I'm going to bring you down for a close up. I'm just going to be careful. I'm not in my paint clothes and I'm going to get paint on me. I can tell. All right. So I'm going to pause it and bring you down. There we go. Those colours aren't perfect to what I see. Let me see if I can... Whoops, wrong way. Uh, that's close. It's pretty close. It's not perfect. But what do you guys think? As a... Um, just a, a ring pole with four rings. So, not the swirl, but um, I really like how you've got these two top ones that are kind of coming down into a point. You've got this nice white ring on this one and the black, well, dark blue ring on that one. And look at these cool effects in the actual rings. They're not cloudy, but they're kind of gone a little bit cloudy, like there was a cloud pour in there, but not over the top, just a little bit. Nicely defined rings, nice colours. Where are we? This one here is really cool. This is the first ring that I did. So this hasn't got anything to change it, to push it out of shape while you're actually doing the ring. And see how this one's pushed off a little bit, but it's not too bad. Um, I think it's kind of good how they're not all completely centralized. Alrighty, that's it. So tell me what you guys think. So um, like, uh, comment, share the video if you think it's great, and subscribe if you have not already. And when you do, just hit the bell and click, um, yeah, hit subscribe, click the bell and hit all, and then it will show you, it will let you know when new videos come up. And yeah, hope you guys like it. Have a great evening, and I will see you soon for another pour. All right, bye.